So are we on the precipice of an even greater shaking of the world? Perry Stone shares the prophetic warnings he's received or witnessed, their impact, and what is still waiting to unfold. If you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. Well, one of the hallmarks of prophecy is the foretelling of things. We see this in the Bible with the book of Revelation and through the various prophets of ancient Israel, and God still speaks in this way. So are there things he is warning us about? Well, today, with the help of our special guest, we'll find out. But first joining me around the table is my daughter in love, Susanna Lamb. How are you? I'm excited, super excited. I love all things prophecy. So you do. let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know it's, it's really kind of hard sometimes to understand right. about Bible prophecy. So yeah. it's good to have someone who really understands it. Exactly. Dorothy Newton. Hello, hello. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great, great. And you know what? I love learning yeah. because there's so much I don't understand. Same. Yeah. And that's just the truth. You learned a lot at the table. Yeah, I, I'm telling you, it's <laughs> the best place to learn. Rachel Lamb Brown, how are you? I'm good, and I'm super excited about today's guest. He is a literal wealth of knowledge, he is. and he has had some visions from the Lord, and I can't wait for him to unpack that and how it relates to what is literally going on in the world today. Yeah, you just did a good little tease there. <laughs> so you want to be sure and stay tuned so you can hear about that dream or vision. How are you doing? Hey. Cindy Johnston? Doing well, thank you. Good, good. It's always good to see you from Fort Worth. Yes, Fort Worth, Texas. Little drive over. <laughs> well, Cindy Murdoch, how are you? Hi. I'm doing great, thank Cindy you. Cindy squared. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Cindy, Cindy. My Cindy's. Well, he is a renowned evangelist and Bible teacher who's here to tell us about prophetic visions and what the Lord is revealing. Please welcome Perry Stone is here. All right. There he goes. Hello. Yeah, you Hello. Pretty fast. Hello. Hello. Now, I am a thorn between roses, okay, so I, I have to admit that. Joni, good to be back with you. It's good to have you here, and of course, Pam is upstairs. Yes. And she doesn't... Um, She's heard me preach so much. She's just <laughs> been drinking coffee. <laughs> but we're so glad y'all are here at Daystar today. Yes. Well, you know, many in the body of Christ believe we've entered into a new season, and we've certainly seen an escalation of world events with prophetic end-time connections. Take a look. Increasing violence. Food shortage. The abandonment of truth. As things continue to accelerate, the world seems to be spinning into chaos. Leaders struggle to find answers, and the clock is ticking. Are these just signs of the time, or a warning of things to come? Well, with each breaking headline, new things are coming to pass, but were these predicted by prophetic alerts? And what warning is God now revealing? In your book, Perry, uh, Perry Stone, the visions, visions taken from the private journal of Perry Stone and Fred Stone, his father who's with the Lord, concerning events soon to occur, you talk about that there are actually four methods mm -hmm. that God speaks to us, heavenly messengers, angels, the Torah, the prophets, the word, uh, three vocal gifts, prophecy, tongues, interpretation, and then visions and dreams. Which one does God speak to you through? A combina really a combination. Yeah. The, the, the method that God uses now, of course, is ultimately his word, mm -hmm. studying his word in detail. But the Holy Spirit was given to us, according to John, to show us things to come. Mm -hmm. And then the scripture says that God does nothing except he reveal it to his servants, the prophets. And I would interpret that today as meaning people who are in tune with him. Anyone who's in tune with him can receive a prophetic warning or prophetic 
prophetic word. But we do know from Joel chapter 2 that in the last days, God would pour out his spirit upon all flesh. The sons and daughters would prophesy and old men would dream dreams and young men would see visions. I'm having more dreams now, so I guess that means I'm old. <laughs> and the gray hair gave it away too, you know. But it really, it's really true that there will be an increase among the men and women and the young people of uh, spiritual dreams. And some of those dreams will be warnings. Mm -hmm. And some of those visions will be warnings without a doubt. Well, you've had some really amazing prophetic dreams. Share, if you would, a couple of those with us. The, 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 the most important vision I think I've ever had in my lifetime was about 9-11, five years before it happened. Hmm. I was in Brooksville, Florida, went to lay down uh, before service. And I went into this deep sleep and immediately I was in a full color three-dimensional vision, walking up a road, came to a wall, saw a black square looking cloud in the sky. And when I climbed on the wall, it was the World Trade Center shrouded in black. Mm. It had five gray looking tornadoes coming off mm. of it with paper flying off of it. Wow. And you could see the pa and a cornfield. And it took out a row of corn. Each tornado took out a row of corn. And I ran down the sidewalk. And I'm abbreviating this, of course, but we drew a picture of it. And they'll show, they'll show you that uh, on the screen, and this is this was taken before 9/11 ever happened. Wow. Wow. Now, if you'll remember, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Marcus called me uh, after this. You and Marcus mm -hmm. and we, Brother Copeland was on, and he asked me, Perry, we showed you this. We showed this on Daystar before it ever happened. Showed the pictures. Uh, what do you think it means? And of course, the corn in the Old Testament was the economy. Mm -hmm. So these uh, and, and, and the, this is this is really bizarre. If you take the two trade center buildings that failed, there was trade center. The, the two trade centers there was. There was uh, two, three, four, five, six. There was five, there was actually five buildings affected, besides the two, a total of seven. So the five tornadoes mm. were the buildings that would be affected. The economy was affected. Millions of jobs were lost. And again, we're abbreviating this. That was the most significant uh, vision that I've ever had. Did you recognize the World Trade Centers? Like I, I knew when I saw it what it looked like. Yeah, because but, but I could distinct. never figure out what it meant. Mm. Uh, I remember during Y2K, someone said that could be a computer mainframe. I said, we'll just see. Of course, that didn't pan out. Yeah. And, and I actually I actually had three drawings made. I put them in the book, but I had three drawings made in 1999 by J. Michael Leonard of Cleveland, Tennessee. And when it, five days before the Trade Center was struck, I found those drawings and pulled them out and I laid them down. Mm -hmm. And they can verify this at the office. I said, terrorists are going to attack the Trade Center. Wow. And I walked out with the pictures. Then at 10 in the morning, approximately, they said a plane has struck one of the towers. And I thought it was a little plane because mm. I didn't have a television set. Like and when an accident. The, yeah, exactly, an accident. When they said the second one, and when I saw the smoke coming up, that's what I saw in the vision. Remember, the first mm -hmm. plane hit, and there was that square top yes. part yes. and yes. the black smoke. And I'm just telling you, I can't even tell you how I felt. And I started getting calls from Marcus and all the television networks that had mm -hmm. seen the picture. Mm -hmm. uh, we're talking to years, you know, quite a bit before it happened. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, we were interviewed in Atlanta for four hours on live television. And uh, it, 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 when God shows you something like this, it's very humbling. Yeah. It doesn't make you more important than anyone else or special. And honestly, it's, it's quite frightening because then you realize if you see another vision, it's mm -hmm. likely to come to pass. Right. Why do you mm -hmm. feel like the Lord revealed that to you? To this day, and I'm being as honest as I can be, I have no idea. But I do know that when I when I told it, and it was it happened in detail, that it made the ministry known all over the world. Mm -hmm. And maybe that was God's avenue of getting people to listen to what you say, mm -hmm. to say, well, look, if the guy mm -hmm. says something, if he says the Lord told him, right. take it to the bank. And I think that may be yeah. it. And that's why I'm very careful. If the Lord does not speak to me, because people will say, what about the election? What about this? If I don't hear it, you're never going to hear me say mm -hmm. anything. You're never you're going to hear me speculate or predict unless I absolutely know right. that I've seen something. So the oil mm -hmm. rig. Vision. Well, that, that was a few years, and, and I was standing on the coast of Louisiana, and all of a sudden, I saw a black oil tornado on top of the water, and it was real stormy, and it was near a rig, an oil rig, and I thought, wow, what does this mean? And when I turned, I saw five things that would affect. I saw shopping at the mall affected. I saw mom and pop uh, stores shut down. I saw restaurants closed down, and I mean, I literally saw the aftermath, so I called a friend of mine. His name was Dino Ruzzo, who pastored a healing place at the time, and I said, Dino, know there's going to be an oil explosion off the coast of Louisiana and you guys need to get prepared for it. And Dino, two years later, it happened. Mm. And I brought the paper after, you remember the oil was coming up out yes. of the ground on mm -hmm. that, and yeah. they couldn't stop Horrible. it and it was going to be mm -hmm. a disaster. And uh, I went to Healing Place Church in Baton Rouge and they 
asked me to bring the original paper that I wrote the vision down. And we prayed in June and said, God, you've got to stop this. Thousands of people were in that building yeah. that day. And we prayed. And do you know, a month later, a man, the story I heard was he was sitting in his bathtub and saw the plug and how it was holding the water and the air. And he, he realized, wait a minute, we can do a plug in there and shut that off. And that's the man. He was a Christian man from what yeah. I've been told huh. that got, had the idea of how to stop that. But that was one that he, you know, the people in that area especially remember it because mm -hmm. I will tell these things in advance, but only when I'm released to do it. Yeah. You can release a vision too early and time goes by and doesn't happen. Yeah. And then people soon forget it. You know? Or you can be yeah. like Joseph and talk about it way before it's time. Yes. <laughs> you got in trouble. <laughs> you got in trouble. True. Okay. And that's what got him in so trouble. So you're, um, let's kind of come up to a little bit to what's been going on in the world now, but the Lord actually showed you some things about the COVID-19 pandemic before it oh, came. Oh, that was one I, I'll never forget. I saw cities completely empty. And now this would take a little too long to tell, but I was taking these big cases that I take to my big meetings with my product and I was pushing them. The, the, the wheels were off and I was trying to drag them into a, a city for a meeting. When I opened it, they weren't moving. There was a trumpet. And I blew it, nothing came out. A second one, I blew it, nothing came out. A third case, fourth case. And so I, there, there was somewhere around five cases there. And when I would blow it, nothing would come out. And I looked, streets are empty. Nobody's on the sidewalk. We're talking about a major city. And I kept telling people something's going to happen to shut the cities down. Now, this was a hard one because people said, the cities are never going to shut down. Yeah. Harry Stone's really off. When COVID hit, they start sending me pictures of New York and Atlanta. And so help me, I couldn't travel. I couldn't sound the trumpet in my meetings. Yeah. You understand? Everything yeah. was shut off for at least for several months. Yeah. And that one, of course, that one is a lot more detailed, but that is one that definitely happened that we talked about, but I had no idea how it would happen until COVID came. And wow. it, I mean, it was fulfilled. It was almost spooky to see those pictures, you know, because yeah. Pam would say, I say, Pam, look at this. She said, Perry, look at Atlanta. Everything's empty. Nobody's on the street. But who would have thought? I know. I mean, would you have thought if I'd have Never. predicted that and said the Holy Spirit showed me no. cities? Because it would have been hard to vision why and how yeah, could why? something how like could that happen. happen you yeah. know, uh, yeah. Well, John Paul, do y'all remember mm -hmm. years ago talked about this? Mm -hmm. he t I remember he talked about riots yes. and looting. And we were like, <laughs> yeah, it was no. too yeah. I can't even imagine. Yeah. There was nothing like that going yeah. on at the time, but he saw this in major cities. And many times a prophetic word is always given in advance because God gives a people time because people ask me, why does God give it? Here's the reason God gives it. Number one, it gives the people time to, to return to God and repent. Yeah. A lot of this, maybe there are some things that could be prevented if people would totally turn to God, mm -hmm. even our nation. Yeah. He gives them time, and then he gives them time for the mockers to come and mock it. Now, I'm telling you, this yeah. happens. And yeah. then when it happens, the mockers are made fools out of. Wow. And yeah. the people that believe said, we told you, and you yeah. need to pay attention to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So there's a reason he gives it so far in advance sometimes, and that's, that's a lot of it. And now, yeah. when you, so do, go ahead. Go, go when ahead, you have me. a vision... Is there a time frame typically that the Lord gives you? Oddly enough, that's the thing that really bothers me the most is I, I never see a date and I never see a time frame. And so some of them, for example, and, and, and there's a whole series in the books, and I finally did this. I said, Lord, he said, if I've given you the word and you're supposed to be a watchman, I'm going to hold you accountable. And I, that's why I wrote this. I got yeah. very concerned about if God shows you, why do you have it in a journal? Mm -hmm. And so I have seen tsunamis on the West Coast in the East Coast of the United States. In fact, I start having tsunami dreams every two weeks, not mm -hmm. thinking about them, not studying Has them. Has this happened? Or we want to hear about the dreams that you had that haven't happened. Yeah. Well, the tsunamis have not. But I do, know, and I do know if my name is Perry Stone and I'm sitting here, you will play this back one day and say, God showed Brother Stone this. Now, the reason I, the reason some things are hard for me to share is I'll start getting hundreds of emails. Should we move? Should we move? Yeah. I don't tell anybody what right. to do. I will not give you advice mm -hmm. because yeah. it may not be for years from now. Right. So why would you want to move prematurely? Right. But yeah. God, just like Lot, will tell you when to go and where to go. And yeah. just like Noah, he'll prepare you, see. But my dad had one before he died, and I have never forgot this, about uh, the, the a, a fork, a knife, and a spoon, and, and a fork, a knife, and a spoon. And anyway, there was plastic, and it was buried underground. I said, Dad, how much was buried? And, and the book will tell you, but in my memory, it was either two thirds or one third, but there was going to be a shortage of food. I said, that's a food shortage in America. He said, absolutely. Wow. Well, we didn't think it could happen here, but what happened was the fertilizer. And I know farmers, yes. they can't get the fertilizer for the hay, so they're right. selling the cattle. They mm -hmm. can't get the fertilizer for the food. The fertilizer went in my area up like from, I, I mean, 
this is a fictitious price, I'm not exact, but like 300 to $1,000 mm. for, and they, they can't afford it. Right. And so what happens is with the flooding, with the droughts, with everything that's happening, like Lake, Lake Mead being down, you can see the time mm -hmm. when that would absolutely oh come goodness. to pass, yeah. Yeah. the shortage. Yeah. Yeah. Israel, I mean, that is the apple of God's sure, eye. Tell absolutely. us about what do you see happening now that kind of corresponds with scripture and, you know, we've heard about these, you know, uh, nuclear facilities and, mm -hmm. you know, in Iraq, Iran. Well, if I can get these three things in real quick, what I, what I see is the, the Iranian nuclear facilities, they're now talking about we're going to have a nuke and they're very dangerous. The Iranians are very dangerous. Yes, so yeah. Israel will do something. And I'm not saying it's going to be a military attack. I think there's other things they can do to try to put a stop to but that. But they can't just be down. still about that. The, it's they, impossible yeah. because a nuke mm -hmm. in the hands of a wrong person is, yes. is World War III any right. way you cut yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The other thing I think when, when President Trump was in, there were, you had, you had, you had Egypt and Jordan that already made peace with Israel, but you had four nations that made peace with Israel. Of course, his, his son-in-law, Jared, was very responsible for helping that. But if he'd have stayed in, you had somewhere around four to five other nations that were, it was about economy, it wasn't about religion, right. it wasn't about Judaism versus Islam, it was about the economy, which was a good move on the Arab nation's part to do that. Because Israel is massive technology and massive food supplies and that type of thing. So, uh, I believe that there was an interruption in that, obviously, because you haven't heard anybody mm -hmm. else making the peace because mm -hmm. that was an emphasis there. Yeah. And I, I'm not sure if that was just a delay that it will happen eventually, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm at this point really watching the alignments of Syria and Turkey and these nations that are mentioned in Gog of Magog in Ezekiel chapter uh, 38 and 39 seem to be aligning a little bit faster than we thought, and it's because of the economic situation that they're aligning. So we've had our eyes on Ukraine, right? Yeah. But while we've been watching that, there have been buildups on the Syrian border, Russian troops. Yes. I mean, they've, they've talked about that. The news hadn't really talked about yeah. that. So, like, I know John Hagee's talked about the Ezekiel 37 prophecy. So how, how close do you think we are to that? I mean, are things lining up? Do you see that happening in, in Bible prophecy? I don't, I don't ever like to, yeah, I definitely see it lining up. The nations yeah. are lining up. The coalitions are lining up. You know, China is no doubt the head of the kings of the east. But here's a big one for you. Have you seen lately the Euphrates River, the level that it's at? The Bible says that the Euphrates River is going to dry up, mm -hmm. making a way for the kings of the east. And I'm telling you, the wow. Euphrates River is drying wow. up right now wow. in place is that they are terrified that their um, hydroelectric dams are not going to be working. And, and uh, there's, there's people that, and, and this is to me a little bit more on the conspiracy level, more on just the factual level. But as the river has dried up, they have found caves and tunnels that go underground. And the Bible says four angels are bound in the Euphrates River that are loosed in the tribulation wow. to torment men. Wow. And so when they saw the Euphrates drying up and these people went into, into these caves, and there's one place there's actually four caverns. Wow. They say, oh my, the angels have already been loosed. Oh, so goodness. I don't think they have been, but it's, it's kind of like doo 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 doo. <laughs> this, but this is the kind of thing that's happening wow. that you don't hear reported on the news that you have to have prophecy teachers, mm -hmm. Jimmy Evans, for example, or myself or uh, Rabbi Khan that studies this on a consistent basis to share. Otherwise, you're not going to hear about it. Mm -hmm. So why do, um, why are there parts of the body of Christ that do not believe in the rapture? I know you believe in the rapture. Jimmy does. Marcus did. You do. I yep. do. Women at the table I are going do. on the first load. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But talk a little bit about that because, I mean, there's a lot of controversy over that when I say that. And I'm just like, this is what I say. Okay, pre, mid, or post, I'm going to be ready. Okay. Exactly. Right. But there's a That's lot right. of scripture that points to pre. Yeah, let, based me, just, on let me just say, and this is not a sales pitch, trust me, but I have 10 hours of teaching on the rapture. And if you don't believe it after that, you never will. Because <laughs> I really went into detail of, 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 real quick. The word rapture is not in the Bible. Why are we using it? Neither is the word trinity, neither is the word demon, neither is the word millennial reign, neither is the word second advent. It's a theological word. Those are theological words we use to describe an event. Right. But you can absolutely go to the pictures, the types and shadows. Exodus 19, the Lord came down and Moses went up. That's, that's a picture of the rapture. And there was a trumpet sounding louder and longer. That's the trump of God. I mean, there's so many. It, it would literally, I would have to 
sit here literally for five hours and probably could do it by the grace of God through memory of the scripture and show you absolutely the scriptures are there for it. The pattern is there for it. Mm -hmm. Everything is there that there is a a, a time before the wrath of God is revealed that he, because the Bible says he's not appointed us to wrath. Right. It said to pray that you be accounted worthy to escape yes. these things. And the seven yes. years will be the pouring out of the wrath. Absolutely. I mean, it's that, the wrath of the lamb and the wrath of God. The is wrath of the called. lamb. And yeah. so right now we're holding. I'm, the, I'm of the opinion that one of the restrainers is the Holy Spirit mm, in the body yes. of Christ in the earth. Yeah. We are the devil's biggest problem yes. on the earth right yeah. now. And when we are taken away, 2 Thessalonians 2, and the restraining power is removed, then the wicked one is revealed who is the Antichrist. And so I believe that we, I mean, I mean, look, look at how the Christians are treated mm -hmm. who believe just what the Bible says. You're yeah. laughed, you're scorned, you're mocked at. Right, yeah. But at the same time, the body of Christ is growing exponentially all over the world. Well, yeah. do you believe that we are um, we are going to experience a, an awakening before the rapture? You know what? In my heart, down in my spirit, I do. But I also believe it will come on the tail end of some disasters. Yeah. In the and this is why I'm basing this. Israel would never turn till trouble came. Mm. It's true. When they got into captivity, they cried. I mean, this is hilarious. Book of Judges. They went to captivity. They cried out and God yeah. delivered them. They went into captivity again because they sinned. They cried out and God delivered them. Yeah. It's like over and over right. again, like 10 Humanity times. Humanity just yeah. doesn't learn. Do they, they don't learn their lessons. <laughs> and there would no. have to be great trouble for them to accept mm. a yeah, because world leader. If they, yeah, that because be you know this, if things go well in the United States and go great, people tend to forget the Lord. Yeah. And yeah. it's a pattern yeah. of it's ancient It's like 9-11, yeah. like right after everybody's yeah. in church. So this is why Jesus never revealed when he's coming. Do you know why? Because if Jesus were to say, I'm coming in 2025 on Rosh Hashanah, here's what would happen. Everybody would do their thing, yeah. live like they want, and the day before, oh God, I'm asking you in Jesus' name to forgive me of my sins, Lord, I ask you yeah, to come. Right. That's what would happen. Yeah. So what he does, he keeps it secret so that uh, watch and pray, keep your eyes open, mm -hmm. keep a repentant heart mm -hmm. so yeah. that you'll be ready. Yeah. And so Paul said, we, because we have this hope, we purify ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And that's, that's why he kept it secret, really. Wow. You're not trying to hide from us. There's another vision that you had in your book that hasn't come to pass yet about cremation ovens. Can you share oh, that? Oh, my goodness. Us? This happened. Now, look, look, look my hair standing Ooh, up. I Jeez. <laughs> hey, can, uh, I just, can I just tell you one little thing before you talk about that? So yeah. we, we had a program we did with Brian Melvin who the Lord allowed him to go to hell. And um, he talked about the pods. Like he said, it was like a staircase. Mm -hmm. And there were pods that were built into the wall. But um, mm. after the program, I asked him, did he see anyone in there that he recognized? And he said that he recognized Hitler and he was in an oven in one of those pods. Wow, so he was being tortured by the very the thing he, he did. did. Yeah. And I can, I can authenticate for that from the Bible. When the rich man was in hell, he did not say, to Abraham, I'm tormented in these flames. He said, give me water. I'm tormented mm. in the flame. What was it? What was his sin? He did not feed a poor man. Mm. And because he didn't feed a poor man, what you did, that's what, that's what got him there. Mm. He, he, was, yeah. he hated the poor. And so yeah. his mouth burned. Mm -hmm. His mouth was burning. Flame, singular. Anyway, that's another message. Yeah, yeah. So what, what, were, what were we asking? You About were asking, the cremation. The cremation. Yeah. Here's what happened. Uh, I started having something very strange happen, and my dad was able to do this, but I never was. It just wasn't a gift. I was, I was on the plane with some of my team members, and I closed my eyes, and I'm telling you, Full color, three-dimensional, fully awake. I had my hands doing this. I'm saying, oh, dear Jesus. I said, guys, I'm seeing a vision. And it came right in me. And I saw uh, a round one. And I saw one that was uh, like that. And I saw a, uh, one that was arched, a square one. And one was arched, three ovens. I saw the, a timer on them. It was a, like a green-looking light in a digital timer. I, I mean, it was so detailed. And I saw it twice. And I heard the cremation ovens will be used. Now, I never got, in the book, I did a little speculation, which I don't like to do, of what would cause that many bodies to have to be cremated. Uh, usually, they would just dig in the ground right. and, and do that, you know, right. unless there is a disease spreading as a result of the bodies. Mm. Then at that point they they would be mm. they would be cremated. Like if it was a real plague that had hit, right. then they would have to right. cremate. Yeah. Now I I had heard, and I can't get this confirmed, and I don't really go 
on the internet because it can be a source of misinformation. But I, did, I, do, I do know that Russia had cremation ovens. Some said they were burning trash. Others said they were burning people. I do not know that if that's true. I'm talking about in the Ukraine. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but uh, that's a possibility. But I think that's one of those situations that we'll have to, time will reveal it or time will tell. But it appeared to me maybe something major had happened that a plague was being connected with it. And the only way to get rid of the plague uh, would be something of that nature. That's, mm -hmm. that's what, I don't think it's something like they're burning Christians, they're trying to kill. I don't think that's, because in the Bible, beheading is what's going to yeah. take you out. But there again, they may destroy the bodies after they've done that, yeah. you know. So this is a vision you have in the future with the cremation? Yeah, yes, 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 okay. definitely the future. Then mm -hmm. an, another vision you mentioned was a, a terrorist attack on a public school. Whew. Now, mm -hmm. then, look there again. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you the story real quick. My dad appeared to me in a dream. And he was very disturbed. And I said, Dad, what's wrong? And he said, there's going to be a terrorist attack on a school. And he told me the school in our town where the attack would come. So I got so troubled by it, I called the mayor. This is the, the former mayor of Cleveland. And I said, get me the, the head of the police department and come to my office because I'm going to tell you something. And I said, now, first of all, this, it wasn't this book. I said, here's a book on visions and dreams. I'm not crazy. And of mm -hmm. course, the mayor knew me. He just laughed. Yeah. He said, well, you are sometimes. You know? <laughs> I said, no, because I got to tell you something serious. So as I'm telling the mayor about what I saw, and I won't go into details on TV, but it was an attack. It was on a school. It shut the entire town down. It shut a big Christian university completely down for fear of a retaliation. Mm -hmm. And there were so many kids that were killed. And I can't hardly talk about this because I got great babies. There were so many... Mm. That was what was bothering Dad. It's like he knew it. He's in heaven, but he knew it, and he wanted me to know this is you got to you know you've got to pray against this. You've got to deal with this. As I'm talking to the mayor, the policeman's text goes off. He said, "I've got to go." That day, there was an alleged gunman that was headed to the school, and it was the school dad saw, wow. and they just an angry parent wow. with wow. a gun, and they stopped him. Now that didn't make the news or anything, but I mean, That's so I, but I do think that prayer. Can that type of thing, yes. you better pray because prayer can prevent it. I do believe some of that mm -hmm. prayer can prevent that. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I love all this, but we're out of time. And don't you remember that God reveals these things to the body of Christ so that they can confidently know that God is in control. He will be faithful. So don't let your heart fear right. and don't be afraid. And, you know, we have to understand that, yes, we're living in perilous times, but we're also living in times where God by his spirit is moving in an amazing way around the world. And, right. you know, he's in control and he's with you mm -hmm. and you're not alone. And he's bigger mm -hmm. than anything that's going on that could that's disturb right. you. You know, if you're watching today and you're battling fear, I want you to call that number on the screen. We'd love to pray with you, encourage you. Really, this is why they start exist to encourage you to share the gospel, the good news that Jesus loves you, that hell was never intended for you or me or anyone else, and Jesus paid the price at Calvary. Yes. And all you have to do is just pray and say, Jesus, I believe, yeah. forgive me, come in my heart. That's what my grandpa prayed. He didn't even pray that. He just like, God, if you're there, I need you. <laughs> and that was his prayer. He'd never gone to church. He didn't know how to pray. Uh -huh. But that's what he prayed on a Monday morning in a tool and dye mill in Greenville, South Carolina, that changed the course and direction yes. of our family. So... I just want you to know today, God loves you. If you want to send your prayer request in, you can go to daystar.com, click on prayer, send that in. We're going to pray over all the prayer requests that come in from around the world. While we want to thank our dear friend Perry for joining us at the table. Be thank sure you. to pick up a copy of his book, The Visions. It's got a lot in there. I tell you, very, very interesting. It's available now. And for more on his ministry, you can visit him online at perrystone.org. As always, you can join the conversation online by leaving us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. We always love hearing how Table Talk is touching your life. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Perry. Thank you. You'll for come back and, yes. and update us as time always, goes on. Always. Okay. Thank you, ladies. <laughs> love all of you. Love you. Hey, it's a new day. Yes. God's got a great plan for your life. Don't you ever forget that. No matter what's going on, He's not through with you. See you next time. Bye-bye for today.